Have you managed to deduce anything about this particular case yet? Have I managed to deduce anything, my oh dear fellow? Who do you suppose discovered the culprit in his most cunning hiding place? That's right. It was none other than the great detective before you now, Mr. Herlock Sholmes. I see. I'm in these now because of him. When I became anxious about Cosmo-sama this morning, I summoned all the crew members to force the cabin door open. And I concealed myself from all their number, gaining entry to the scene of the crime. Yes, luckily for everyone, the great detective Herlock Sholmes was on the board. <laughs> was on board. And the handcuffs seemed to be an excellent fit, Mr. Naruhodo. The very moment I laid eyes on the scene, two facts were immediately apparent to me. Oh really? Two facts, you say? Mr. Sholmes, tell us please, what two facts were apparent to you when you came into the cabin this morning? Oh yes, but first, let us be precise. The two facts in question were immediately apparent to me. Yes, yes, I understand, but what were they? Allow me to elucidate. Two facts I deduced from a mere mo momentary glance at the scene of the crime were as follows. Number one, the cabin was locked from within, rendering escape of the culprit out of the question. Number two, the victim was Russian and killed following a dispute with an acquaintance. Hold on, Mr. Sholmes. What made you think the victim was Russian? Observe the dying message left by the victim on the floor. That is a Russian... <laughs> that is a Russian word for wardrobe. Do, do you really think Kazuma-sama could have left a dying message in Russian? In their final moments, many their native, many find their native tongue filling their head. For this young man, Russian. Cosmo was Russian, was he? Initially, I considered Garderobe by the name of the killer, a certain Robert Gard, perhaps. But in the interest of thoroughness, I decided it would be wrong not to look inside the world wardrobe there at least. But which you, where you found Mr. Naruhoto sleeping soundly. Hot tell, I found you. The renowned Russian revolutionary killer. Why is it that I'm Russian too? I observe that you were wearing the same attire as the victim. In other words, you were acquainted. And if my memory serves, that outfit is the traditional dress of the Russian, Russian people. Our uniforms are the traditional dress of the Russian people? I had no idea. And I had no idea a detective could get something so wrong. I took a photograph of the victim in the message that I might analyze if possible hidden details. This... This was taken immediately after the young man was discovered, before the body was removed. Yes, Cosmo had already been taken away when I woke up. This is the first time I've actually seen him like this. Are you alright, Mr. Naruhodo? Oh, yes, thank you. you something Mr. Sholmes what pray you mentioned Russia before as well didn't you you know when you said I was a fearsome revolutionary fleeing from Russia and all that oh yes the train of reasoning that, that led me to the truth would you mind explaining that train of reasoning to me do you think 
Suddenly, if it interests you. Can we talk about your deduction before the thing you concluded about me, I mean? The now famously accurate, troubling predicament you find yourself in. Actually, it was the other details that I was more hoping to discuss. You know, the merciless Russian revolutionary and assassin of 16 part? Oh yes, the more sordid details. It was a fairly commonplace deduction. Here we have this morning's paper, the main headline reads. Revolutionary violent Bolshevik flees Russia via Shanghai. This vessel made a port call at Shanghai yesterday, and last night the young Russian was murdered. Since when was Cosmo a Russian? It sounds like Mr. Sholmes had concluded he was Russian because of what Cosmo Sama wrote on the floor. It was a simple act of reasoning to realize that the culprit of this crime was the same as this revolutionary, one who would kill the very man who helped him to escape after his true identity was discovered. Yes, you, violent Bolshevik. No, no, how could it be me? I don't look anything like this man, just look at his face. Well, you are fierce and revolutionary after all. Therefore, you have no doubt learned to revolutionize your appearance as well. And I might add, your name does not appear on the ship's passenger list. Need I say more? What about the other details? The 16 victims of assassination and blowing up the Crystal Tower. Oh yes, the journalist clearly interviewed the man and printed all those particulars in the article. The deeds the man has perpetrated thus far unless he is plotting. Yes, everything about this revolutionary Bolshevik was included. There can be no mistake. Do revolutionaries usually agree to interviews with newspaper reporters, I wonder? And what about the part where you said I was just returning from Afghanistan? Also quite clearly stated here in the article. Bolshevik has recently returned after a period of subversive activities in a war-torn region of Afghanistan. Here, take the paper for yourself. as a little memento of this great deduction. Thanks. I've observed all that is of interest to me within its pages, but I see no rubbish bin nearby. You may find the article on the back page of interest as well. On the back? Cast your eye over it sometime if interest takes you, though you may need someone to interpret. It's all written in Russian. Something relevant, Naruto san? Well, no, I, I mean, it looks like it might be interesting. I can't read a, read a single word, I'm afraid. No, nor can I, but look at this picture. Perhaps it's about a beautiful young Russian princess, do you think? She is very pretty, isn't she? I suppose you enjoy articles like this, do you? I, I don't know, I can't make any sense of it. I'm glad you've noticed this article. Allow me to give you a short summary of its contents. Oh, thank you. It's about the disappearance of a young lady last night. Renowned prima ballerina of the Novovich Ballet disappears from Shanghai. During a performance in Shanghai, the famous dancer was reported missing. She is, of course, the talented young Nikolina Pavlova. It would appear the woman was in costume when she was found to be missing from the dressing room, wearing the diamond tiara you see pictured, which is worth some 20,000 rubles. 
Oh, how much is 20,000 rubles? I have no idea, but I'm quite sure it must be an unbelievable sum of money. This here is the property of Novovich Ballet. It would seem the director is beside herself with worry. Yes, I'm not surprised. The company is most anxious to recover both Miss Pavlova and the valuable Tiara. They've requested international assistance at all ports with the sailings to Great Britain. Could this be another case of a Russian fleeing his or her country? It does seem to be the Russian thing to do. I'm not even going to dignify with that with a response, Mr. Narahoda. Floundering is a sorry sight. Allow me to offer some assistance. The article on the front page of the newspaper is concerned with a, is concerned with a fearsome Russian revolutionary. It reads, Revolutionary violent Bolshevik flees Russia via Shanghai. Yes, you told us that before. It reveals also that those who see the man's beard with their own eyes never need to tell the tale. Oh my goodness, he is fearsome. Well, presumably the newspaper photographer was alright, wasn't he? The solution is obvious, of course. If he decides, if he despises his beard to that degree, he need only shave it off. I'm not quite sure that's a problem, Mr. Sholmes. must be remnants of the glue you used to stick the paper seal on the wardrobe. That's right, it was pulverized rice. Pulverized rice? Yes, I pulverized some of the rice for my evening meal, even though it broke my heart. Broke your heart? What do you mean? Remember, I'm a stowaway on this ship. All I had to eat were Cosmos leftovers. Even a couple grains of rice could have meant the difference between life and death. Oh my, it must have been awful for you, Naruhodo san. But I have some glue with me as it happens. You're welcome to use it this evening. Oh, thank you very much. You drew the characters for this paper seal, didn't you, Naruhodo san? You're such a bold, vivid strokes you made. You're looking at a man who came aboard inside a trunk. Those brush strokes needed to make a statement. If they found me in that wardrobe, those Russians would have hurled me into the freezing cold ocean. I'm sure none of the crewmen would have done anything like that. Well, I'm not so sure. They would have they would have forced you to wash dishes in the galley until you're on death's door or something like that. That's a lot of dishes. Before we started talking, you were examining Cosmo's desk, weren't you? Cosmo? Oh yes, the victim? Did you notice anything useful? Anything at all? Observe for a moment the desktop of the victim. We see that the victim was engaged in penning some text. London Diary. Cosmo is keeping notes of the trip. Uh, but I don't think you should read his private writings. It could upset people. Tragic. It's something you ought to perhaps elucidate before the act of reading. You mean you read it already? It is my business to know what other peoples do not. Yes, believe it or not, I know a smattering of Japanese. Oh, I see.
just to show Sam, aren't you going to throw the detective with one of your trademark takedowns? I'm sorry, Naruhoto san, what on earth do you mean? Anyway, to return to the matter at hand, namely this diary belonging to the victim, it would appear the final sentence is incomplete, as if the author were cut short. Tell me, what is the nature of the writing? Pray be precise as to details. Oh, but I thought you knew Japanese. Smattering, dear boy, smattering. Sayonara, bonsai, mikado, nado nado. I trust you're suitably impressed. <laughs> this diary is littered with complicated looking characters, which I can read precisely none. <laughs> so what was all that showing off before then? If you would be so kind as to show me, I would be happy to read it for you, Mr. Sholmes. I'm much obliged, my dear madam. The final entry here in Kazumasama's diary consists of just two short sentences. The first reads, 1.23 a.m. I can hear a faint whistling sound. Whistling sound? These are very deep waters, pray go on. The second sentence reads, 1.35 a.m. What looks like some sort of speckled band is dangling from the ventilator grill. A speckled band? What on earth does that mean? I have no idea. I've never heard that expression before. The ventilator grill, you say? The man was presumably referring... So the teeth there on the wall, which connects to the adjoining cabin. So I believe I've given you enough to consider for the time being at least. Do you have somewhere to go? As it happens, the victim's writings in his diary have piqued my interest. The matter warrants further investigation, I believe. And if I am still too long, the seasickness takes hold. I suppose you're thinking of investigating the cabin next, the cabin next door, which the ventilator connects to. Great detectives are a curious breed. Our minds rebel at stagnation. We crave mental exaltation. So yes, I intend to investigate. Hence the truth will become clear soon enough. Do you think perhaps that we could go with you? No, that would be somewhat complicated. But why? A simple glass of your wish to reveal the answer. After all, you're the prime suspect in this matter now. There's no point. There's no point in trying to turn it into a question. You're the one who decided I was the culprit in the first place. Whatever do you mean? I have no recollection of naming you as the culprit at any point. You must be joking. You just said it only a moment ago. Dear me, you are clearly misguided. I would have no cause to say such a thing. Well, actually, Mr. Sholmes, I did hear you say that too. You're quite sure? Well, that's very strange. I wouldn't have said you had the face of a criminal, you know. Not really. So what? Were you looking at my niece before? Some great detective you are. Well, anyway, that was then and this is now. What do you mean? What I mean, sir, is this. If you are the culprit, then you must play the part more convincingly. Roll over an exceptional fate. Now he's just being plain rude. You know, 
off he goes, having just laughed in my face. His sense of humor is as twisted as his name. Naruhoda san, what are you standing there for? You must go and investigate the cabin next door as well. Aren't you forgetting something? What about these? There's no way I can. After Kazuma Sama spent his dying moment struggling to leave us a clue, you're willing to give up? You're just gonna roll over and accept your fate? I think we still have some investigating. I, th I think we still have some investigation to finish off in here first, don't we? Let's carry on examining what we can in this cabin while we wait for a chance to slip next door. Something wrong, Naruto son? Oh no, it's just that crewman standing by the door. I can't help feeling I've seen him somewhere before. Oh yes, you're right. He does look familiar. Excuse me, sir. Yes, what can I do for you? I recognize that face, but It is. I didn't know you were here, Inspector Hosonaga. Hello again. What are you doing here? I think that should be my line. I was so stunned when I saw you. My heart stopped. Nearly stopped, I hope. I received some special orders to go undercover as a member of the crew on board the ship. You certainly seem to enjoy undercover work, Inspector. If there's anything I can do to help you, please ask. Yes, it's a bell core contraption, I think. What do you mean, contraption? I read about it in a book I was studying that talked about life in Great Britain. Large households often have bell cords like this, which you can pull to ring a bell to summon servants. Really, that sounds almost magical. Shall we give it a little try? Yes. In the interest of cultural research, obviously. I suppose nobody comes for lowly Japanese people. Oh, I'm sure that everyone's busy, that's all. some two weeks since we set sail from Japan. Have you really been living in that wardrobe the entire time, Naruto-san? I think living isn't quite the right description. Oh no, I suppose not. Although it must have been rather exciting making this voyage in your own secret hideout. The trouble was, I never knew when a member of the crew might come in. So yes, I did basically have to live in the wardrobe. And last night was no exception. But because of that, you had no idea what was happening out here in the cabin. No, sadly not. So what are your special orders this time, Inspector? 
Yes, and why are you dressed as a member of the crew? I'm so sorry. This is all my fault. I take full responsibility. For what? My orders were to act as Asugi-san's bodyguard. It was Minister of Justice Jigoku who pushed for this overseas study tour to go ahead. And he entrusted me with ensuring that Asugi-san reached Great Britain without being assassinated. Assassinated? How could that even have been a possibility? I'm not sure. But these are complicated times. There are tensions between the world's greatest powers. Minister Jikoku said we should be prepared for all eventualities. I, I don't believe it. Kazuma-sama was assassinated? Obviously, we couldn't get Asugi-san a visible security escort. Which is why I'm undercover now, posing as one of the crew. I see. And I didn't take my eyes off him the entire time we've been on board. From morning until night, every day. But I never imagined it would happen here, inside his own cabin. Not here on the first class deck. I failed miserably at my assignment, and Oski san is dead as a result. I'm a disgrace. All I can do is humbly apologize. Inspector. So if there's anything at all I can do, just say the word. We're doing what we can to investigate Cosmo's death ourselves. I thought you might be. You didn't do it, did you? You're not the killer? Of course not! We'd really like to investigate the cabin next door. Yeah, so we need to be allowed out of this cabin. I'm sorry. What? You've been deemed a... You've been deemed a risk to the ship's safety. If you move to even touch the handle of the cabin door, that stormy looking seaman there would surely snap your neck in two. I suppose I'm not just a stowaway now. They think I'm a murderer as well. Would it be possible to give me something to work with, do you think? I'm going to need something persuasive. What do you mean? If I had a solid reason why the next door cabin should be investigated, for example, I'd do everything I could to persuade the captain to allow it. Really, I'd lay my life on the line if I had to. But I don't see how. There may be a way. What? Really? Think of how you tried to persuade me of your innocence, Naruto-san, by presenting me with a piece of evidence that you already had. It's just the same as when you are in court. You must have done it many times during your trial. What's that? It's Kazuma's diary. Just before he died, Kazuma-sama wrote something rather strange in his diary. Strange? In what way? 
He wrote, what looks like some kind of speckled band is dangling from the ventilator grill. A speckled band? That is strange. Yes, we're still trying to work out what he meant by that. But what I'd like to know is... Don't tell me. The ventilator, is it? You're very astute, Inspector. That ventilator clearly joins to the next door cabin. That's right, so if we could investigate in there, we might be able to work out what the speckled band was. Alright then. I can't leave this cabin at the moment. I'm stuck here until we arrive at the next port. The captain has given me strict orders to guard the scene of the crime, you see. I'll have to entrust the investigation to you. Really? You're willing to do that? Yes. As long as you don't leave the first class cabin area, I'm afraid I can't remove those handcuffs, so... But what about the captain? Aren't you going against his direct orders? you that I'll lay my life on the line if that's what it's to take okay after all I failed to keep Asuki-san safe this is the least I can do thank you let's seize the moment then Naruhodo-san to admit this isn't quite what I was expecting. It's less spacious out here than I thought it would be, and this is the most luxurious accommodation. Yes, indeed. Kazuma-san was being sent on the study tour by the government. That's, how, that's why he was being put up in a first-class cabin. Even still, this is about twice as large as my accommodation in steerage. Really? That must be awful. Look over there. There's another crewman keeping watch. He looks enormous, even if he is sitting down. The door next to him leads to the second class accommodation. I suppose he's making sure that no one else comes in here who shouldn't. I suppose. Naruhodo-san, you look like a little boy visiting a toy shop for the first time. I would have thought you'd be used to this ship by now. We've been at sea for two weeks already. Well, yes, I know, but the thing is, I was inside Cosmo's trunk when I first came aboard. And ever since then, I've been shut up inside that little wardrobe. It must have been a very trying time for you. Please, don't give me that pitying look. This looks like a plan of the SS Berea. It shows each deck. Look. The Berea is a large-scale steamship with a triple-skinned hull. What a marvel of engineering. Well, it must be... Well, it's been playing on my mind for a while now, actually, but how is it that such a huge lump of metal doesn't just sink to the bottom of the ocean? Oh, that's really quite simple, Naruhodo-san. It is? Well... Consider the Japanese archip archipelago. The islands of Japan? Yes, they're not metal, but they are enormous lumps of earth, many, many times larger than this ship. And they don't sink, do they? 
They've been floating happily on the sea since the gods created them. Well, I suppose so. What do you think this is? It's a very pleasing shape, isn't it? That's the emergency alarm. It's probably best not to touch it. Oh, an alarm? It says, press only in times of emergency. It looks as though it sets alarm bells ringing all over the ship and brings the vessel to a complete stop. What are you doing, Naruhoto san? You mustn't touch it. But this is an emergency situation. Just look at these handcuffs. You know full well that's not what the alarm is for. If you were to bring this vessel to a standstill for no good reason, you'd be in even worse you'd be in an even worse situation. I wish everything would just stop, the, sh the ship included. If you have to do something foolish, at least make it something that doesn't affect anyone else. Damn. Ah, a trap for catching mice. Yes, we have plenty of those back home in Japan. Although, they seem to be using a lump of chalk or something as bait. Let me see. Yes, I think that's what it's called. Cheese. It's made from the milk of cows. Cheese? You can't eat it, Naruhoto-san. The trap will snap shut on your fingers. Really? But... I suppose you're right. You weren't actually going to try it, were you? All I've had to eat for the past couple of weeks is Cosmos leftovers. You don't know how hungry I've been in that wardrobe. Poor you. I'll find a little snack for you later. First class cabin number one. Yes, it's our cabin. Not our cabin, it's Cosmos Samas. Sorry. Your accommodation is confined to the wardrobe inside the cabin. You know how to make a stowaway feel small, don't you? As small as the wardrobe I've been calling home. These cabins are the finest on the ship. My own cabin is steerage. My own cabin in steerage is number 539, by the way. 500 and how many cabins are there? This is it. This is the cabin next to ours. The one the ventilator connects to. Yes, the ventilator comes from which Kazuma Sama wrote that he saw a speckled band emerging. Maybe whoever's in this cabin can help solve that particular mystery. Let's ask. Oh, um. Excuse me, we, um. Need to get inside this cabin here. The sailor's eye speaks volumes. They're clearly saying, Keep out. That's what I wrote on the sign we put over the wardrobe doors. It doesn't look like he's going to let us pass. That's a problem. There's a huge book on top of the table there, and there's a pen next to it. Yes, that looks like the ship's log. Shall we have a little look through it? The writing is so neat and precise, every detail about the voyage has been meticulously recorded. You wouldn't expect a rough and ready sailor to have such a beautiful handwriting. Nothing. No reaction at all. I thought he might appreciate the compliment. I'm not sure that rough and ready is much of a compliment, Naruhoto-san, even to a sailor. Anyway, last night's log is mostly blank. Pres presumably that there was nothing to report.
Excuse me, but can I ask you something? You, you little stowaway murderer. That wasn't a good start, was it? Alright, let me try instead. Good day, Mr. Sailor. I'm so sorry to trouble you, but could I perhaps ask you something of you? You, you little third class ladies maid. Oh, we seem to have caught the sailor on a bad day, Suzuto san. I'm not, I am not sailor. My mother gave me name. I am senior crewman Beef Stroganoff. Um, Mr. Stroganoff, about this first class cabin area. Here we are in the finest part of Berlia's steamship. Very, more, very, for very important persons. What sort of very important persons? Government officials, kings and queens traveling in secret, many important persons. That is why I am gu always guarding this place. That's amazing. But somehow I let stupid stowaway inside. I want to pick you up and throw you in the ocean, but Stroganov is not Amon. Am <laughs> Thank you. If I may, I was wondering... Is the cabin next to Mr. Azuki's currently occupied? Um, suzuto san did you understand that? It sounded like, da. I think it's probably rushing for yes or no. Genius. It is not permitted to visit other cabins without invitation. Well, it sounds like there is somebody there. Yes, it's tantalizing. Are you on watch here all the time, Seaman Stroganoff? Duh. Old time. So criminals like you cannot come in or get out. I wonder, could you tell us anything about last night at all? It is said about students, boy. Were you on watch last night as well? Of course. And did you notice anything at, at the time? Anything unusual? Kit. It was clearly a no. I saw nothing unusual, nothing at all. And you didn't hear any strange, no strange noises or sense anything was wrong in some way? I said no. Sorry. who's traveling in the cabin next door to Mr. Asagi's. His name is Mr. Grimesby Ro Roylot. He is very important to Western gentlemen. Do not think about it. He has nothing to do with murder of school students, boy. How can you be so sure about that? Mr. Roy Lott. Roy Mr. Roy Lott is authentic Western gentleman. Such a man would have no interest in lowly students from insignificant Far East Islands. That was harsh. Could you tell us when Mr. Roy thought came aboard? Th 
that is not your business. Come to think of it, even though we've been at two for two, see for two weeks now, and I've been in Cosmos Cabin the entire time, I never once heard anything from the next door cabin, or even felt like there's anyone there. Well, presumably, since this gentleman is occupying one of the first class cabins, he must be rather important. Is that right? That is not your business. This is enough. I cannot say more now. It is time for me to report to Captain. You must return to Cabin. Yes, alright. Bulkhead to sec second class area is staying locked at all times. You escape when the lobster whistles on top of the mountain. Or as English say, when the pigs fly. Yes, I understand. Good. Now we can investigate this area properly, shall we? Definitely. That's the way to the second class area of the ship. Is something wrong? I was thinking about making a run for it, just for a moment. Things aren't exactly going well for me. I might be wrong, but I imagine the moment you reach for the handle of the door, that burly seaman will surely shoot you dead. Oh dear, I'm sorry. Perhaps I went a little too far there. No, I started it with my talk of running away. This is it. This is the cabin next to ours. Yes, the ventilator from which Carlos Masama wrote that he saw a speckled band emerging. Maybe whoever's in this cabin can help solve that particular mystery. No answer. We're out of luck, it seems. There's no one in there in there to help with our inquiries. How annoying. What was that? It came from inside the cabin. Such a high-pitched scream, it must have been a woman. I'm about to break the door down. Mr. Sholmes! I shan't be stopped. When the fit is on me, I revel in kicking the doors off their hinges. Please, wait, Mr. Sholmes. The door doesn't appear to be bolted. It doesn't. Then how the deuce can I dispatch this muscular urge? What prey can I kick? I think we should go in. Who are you? <laughs> Western gentleman, this man looks like Russian to me. We heard a woman scream. The woman? Don't be absurd. As you can see, there's nobody but me in this cabin. Get out, all of you, now! Please excuse the intrusion, but 
Your Mr. Gramsby Roydon, I believe. Yes, that's me, and you are. I'm the one, I'm the one and only, the actual Herlock Sholmes. You've heard of me, no doubt. No. I'm, I'm a great detective among great detectives, one who adorns the cover of popular magazines, no less. So sh I assure you, you must, you, so I assure you, you may trust me completely. The detective. I do not trust detectives. We distinctly heard a scream emanating from within these halls. But there wouldn't appear to be a lady concealing herself within the wardrobe this time. So I might be bold as to open... So might I be so bold as to ask you to open that small travelling case? Woods, don't be stupid. How could anyone fit in a small trunk like that? Well, it's quite fashionable these days, is it not? Travelling inside one's trunk. Don't look at me. Oh, did you see that, Mr. Naruhoto? Yes. Leave now, otherwise I'll call the steward. I couldn't agree more. Let's see if we can let's see if we can find some clues. What do you think you're doing? This is my cabin, get out. Can you just have a quick look inside? No. Do you have a moment, please, Mr. Sholmes? You need only address me as Sholmes. Well, um, Mr. Sholmes, what were you doing in there? While well, I was resting, of course. Resting? Indeed, I was contemplating our sea voyage from the confines of the wardrobe whilst waiting. Waiting for the inevitable time that you would need to call my great powers of detection into service. And it would seem that the hour is upon us. The time has come. Am I mistaken? Well. Observe closely. Our Russian host in this cabin, Mr. Roydahl. Is clearly trying to hide something. And do you know what is the most effective weapon to use against a Russian hiding a secret? Why, the truth, of course. But it should be pointed out that such methods are not exclusively for the Russians. Can you imagine how the Russian will react when the secret he guards so closely is exposed? Would you like to witness it? <laughs> Well then, what are you about to see may well astound you. For I'm about to apply my great detectives, greatly admired great deductions to the case. Could this man be a more hackneyed portrayal of a dubious Russian, I ask you? What? From time to time it occurs to me. Is the fellow dubious on account of his Russianness, or a Russian on account of his dubiousness? I really don't think either of those should be occurring to you or anyone. That's right, and Mr. Sholmes, I know this man's beard and dark glasses are hard to ignore, 
especially on first meeting, but I once read, it is a capital mistake to theorize before you have all the evidence. It biases the judgment. I must have com I must have complete silence. What are you doing? Why are you peeing at my face like that? Just as I thought. Yes, I've quite made up my mind now. There could be no other explanation that accommodates all the facts. Mr. Roylock, I have reached two inconvert in I've reached two incontrovertible conclusions. What do you mean? Number one, your true identity is that of a villain. You to know she is, you're about to end the existence of something most dear. Are you not? And number two, the other conclusion I have drawn, you are, at this very moment no less, in the midst of committing a most grievous crime. Beneath that beard, your mouth quivers with nervous tension as you realize you've been discovered. Does it or not? Never heard of son. I never imagined I would witness one of Mr. Shum's great deductions with my own eyes. That was a great deduction. Nothing can deceive Mr. Shum's. In a single glance, he can deduce all there is to know about someone. Oh yes, I've read about it countless times in the adventures of Herlock Shum's. Now I've experienced the astonishing impact of his great deduction firsthand. This is like a dream come true. Oh, could you? How could I possibly know such things you wish to say? Very well then. I shall elucidate. I shall explain how it was that I arrived at this pair of conclusions. So do I quarterly invite you upon a journey of logical discovery. Let us board the train of reasoning. Put plainly, let us work through my deductions together. Dubious looking Russian, Mr. Royla obviously would catch his the eye in the first place. It's an enormous pair of shears in your hand. Now we ask ourselves, what could you possibly want with such an implement? The answer, of course, is staring us in the face. You're on the verge of using the shears to cut away the copious beard you spot. Moving on, the question then begs is this, <laughs> why would you desire to rid yourself of the magnificent beard, Mr. Roylott? Once again the answer is plain, we have clear evidence to shed light on the matter. Regard, if you will, this morning's newspaper, in particular the fascinating front page article, which it would appear you have read also, Mr. Roylott. <laughs> Sure, it needs no further clarification. The evidence that reveals your true identity is the article about the revolutionary. In translation, the headline reads Revolutionary Violent Bolshevik Flees Russia via Shanghai. As you cannot fail to observe, the subject of the article possesses, possesses an extremely copious beard. Having, noticed, having noted the article yourself, you decided to remove your incriminating facial hair before you, it gave you away. In short, your true identity is beyond doubt. You are the fearsome Russian revolutionary himself, Violin Bolshevik. Not that I've heard of you myself, you understand. 